Shake and bake. Oh, the bird. Tay, I accidentally ran over a bird. Um, so you're trying to lose fat, you put yourself in a calorie deficit, you've got loads of days in a row of progress, and then one day you decide to have a little treat, maybe eat out, have a few drinks. And that one question crosses your mind, can one day of gluttonous eating really completely undo a full week's worth of effort when it comes to fat loss? And to fully understand this, we're going to need an analogy, or it could technically be a metaphor. I've written three books and I still don't know the difference without Googling it. So let's go do that right now. Come on. So when we have the discussion surrounding fat loss, it is nuanced, which means it's kind of complex. But if I use that word, you think I'm smarter. Now, some people seem to think that the quality of your diet is what governs fat loss, and that just simply isn't true. It plays a big factor because it's a lot harder to consume calories with really healthy whole foods. And although some people have been on Diary of a CEO disputing the fact that calories even exist because insert their paid program is the only way you can lose fat, I'm afraid whichever way you look at it, it boils down to energy balance, which is the amount of calories coming in versus the amount going out and we are on the way to get the visual cue of making this easy to understand. And I know that someone has probably told you online that tracking is really obsessive and that it could cause you to have a mental breakdown, but if it was really important to you to save money for something, you track your finances, you check your banking app, why is it that we can be obsessive in our banking app to save money, but the second you're trying to save calories or put them away in a certain place to improve your composition, which would improve your health for most of you, that's considered bad. Not to mention the amount of bellends on social media at the moment that are wearing glucose monitors. Why is it that tracking calories on MyFitnessPal or NutriCheck is gonna give you a mental breakdown, but eating foods to then check their impact on your blood sugar is completely fine? Now, I got the email just like all the other stupid influencers. It's 3,000 pound for five posts and like everything else, I told them to f off. You might wanna beep that so we can get monetized. I think it's disgusting that people would sell their soul. Type 1 diabetics use glucose monitors so they can check whether or not their blood sugar is going hypo or hypo, too high or too low. For some people that get diagnosed later in life with type 1 diabetes, it can be quite difficult to distinguish. Although the people that have lived with it for a very long time are pretty good at knowing when they're too high, administer insulin, or too low, they might need to eat something. We should pat ourselves on the back and enjoy life because it's a lot simpler that we don't need to manage our blood sugar. Number two, for you bellends getting a few hundred quid to put a post up about using a glucose monitor, shame on you. There are type ones that need that equipment and the fact you would do it for a few hundred quid and to get some likes, bellend. Back to the original point. Tracking your calories isn't about getting the exact perfect amount of calories every day. It's a habitual thing. You wake up and go, oh, I might have a bowl of cereal, but you go, I might have some eggs instead because that would put me on target for my, oh, it's, my, it's the seats making this noise. Oh, yeah. And you think to yourself instead, do you know what? What are you looking at? You seen that baby seat? There's a baby seat in the back. Oh! Yeah, go. Okay. What's the sound from? from? Oh, the seats, there's aircon in the seats. But don't put that in, because I think I'm an arsehole. Are you getting a mirror? Yeah, I need to put the mirror on, but I've got to move the headset. As I was saying, when you track your calories, you might have eggs instead of cereal, because you go, do you know what? It's important to me that I hit my protein for the day. This is a smart choice. It's also about turning up at the fridge and realizing that you need to be accountable for everything you put in your mouth. It's not just a mindless snack. It's gonna get logged. And if you do too much of it, that's gonna impact the amount you can have for dinner. And if you're sat there, like I have many times, with a pauper's dinner of barely any food, just gives you the reality that you put yourself in that space and that you should remain accountable to it. That's a bit tight, even for someone of my parking skills, Etienne. Don't say anything. Fuck that for a packet of biscuits. I ain't curbing these alloys, not for no YouTube video. You hear me? The effort we go into for these videos, I hope it doesn't go unnoticed. Even just tracking in the onset to make sure you're having adequate protein will have a massive impact. Second thing, whenever I've got clients to track their calories over the year, their diet just gets better. It just does, because there has to be some planning and strategy to it. And you know what? If you're out there, I don't make money from you tracking your damn calories. Just try it for a month, because I guarantee after a month, you're like, oh my God, that's actually quite good. And if I'm lying, if I'm full of shit, and you track for a month and it doesn't benefit your fat loss, then feel free to comment on a video and call me a piece of shit. Let's go. This is for you guys. But while we're here, actually, I wanted to show you guys something. Not a great day for the crypto, was it? You love your crypto. We've spoken about this a lot in the video. And fair enough, my net position is up. I'll give you that. I, what, did 600, 600 US dollars. The crypto advice you gave me has put me up 200. But I do not know how you deal with the volatility. Ups, downs, every day. Like, if you were to choose, like, an index fund, fair enough. 
it goes up slowly. But this volatility day to day, I'm not sure my mental health could take it. I'll check it twice a day and it could go wildly from one place to another. And this isn't even real money. It's not real. What does it do? What does the coin do? What does it do? What does it do, Etienne? This is a belief system shared by governments. And although you get fucked for the tax and all of that shit, I get it. But this, I can go in there and get my car washed. We can go in there and get coffee. We can go there and put petrol in my expensive fucking V8. You can do the same with this. Right, how do I go in there and buy petrol with fucking Solana? You just need a, you just need a, a car, a crypto car. It's not real. Shake and bake. We could have hit that. Let's just hope we didn't. Are you happy? Your, <laughs> you talking crypto to me made me do that. You killed a bird. I don't think we hit it. <laughs> we did. I don't know the tiger. The murderer. Not great. That shit really bothers me, you know? I'm not gonna lie, he was a bit slow to cross the road. Yeah, we were, we were moving quite quick though, Etienne, that's the problem. Tay, I accidentally ran over a bird. Um, um, I swerved to avoid the bird, but it meant hitting the bird. I can't even look at the tire. It wasn't a big bird. If it was like a plover, I would have been fine about it, but it was quite a nice bird. But we move on. The easiest way to understand fat loss is like budgeting in reverse. Rather than trying to save money, we are trying to spend money. It is really down to balancing the books. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The amount of calories that every person burns a day is gonna be different. It's gonna be dependent on their size. It's gonna be dependent a little bit on their age. It's gonna be a little bit dependent on their muscle mass. We don't burn that many calories at rest from muscle or as much as we used to believe. Mostly it's gonna be down to activity, the amount you move. And we shouldn't see exercise as just a means of burning calories. You come to the gym to get stronger. You come to the gym to help your body offset injuries. You do not come to burn calories like a hamster on a wheel. So each dollar here is gonna represent 10 calories. So there's gonna be 2000 calories a day here. Now, if 2000 calories was your maintenance, you'd probably wanna go down to about 17, 1800 for a fat loss deficit. And you might wanna to go to 2200 to build muscle. Some people call it a bulk, but remember, the amount of muscle you can grow should dictate how much more you should eat. So therefore, it's not, if you eat this amount, you'll grow this muscle. The truth is you could probably grow about this amount of muscle, so we should probably eat that many more calories. Whereas protein, we need to hit it on a daily basis. With calories, we can chop and change it a little bit. There are diets like the 5-2, where on two days of the week, you heavily restrict calories. And your deficit would be that amount. 1,500, 1,500, it's 3,000 calories. In theory, that could nearly be a pound of fat a week. But again, depending on your size, your age, your weight, your activity level, that would fluctuate and potentially be different. And if you were to do something like one meal a day, you might remove 500 calories from each day because it's pretty difficult to eat over 1,500 calories in one go, especially if you're trying to eat healthily. A calorie deficit is a lot like saving money. Let's say you're trying to save money for a mortgage. The more aggressive you try and save money, the more miserable your life becomes. If you put away half your pay slip, you can't really do many fun things with life. So although you will arrive at your goal a lot sooner, it will not be a happy journey. Whereas if you were someone that was a bit more sensible that would save less money over a longer period of time, you could still go on holidays, enjoy your life, see your friends, whatever. So a sensible deficit, let's say of your daily allowance, we would take $30, which would still leave you with quite a lot of money for the day. And this slow amount of fat loss wouldn't negate your life, your recovery or anything else too much. Scenario one. You only diet on days of the week, Monday through Friday, where it's a little bit easier to restrict and reduce the amount of calories you have coming in. The weekends, you might leave to enjoy yourself. This is where you can have that extra allowance of calories to do life. Or if you're someone that really wants to lose that fat, you might say no fam, seven days a week, hashtag no days off. So what we can do is we can look at all of this cash here as calories that you reduced from your daily income. And at the end of each week, you can cash that out to see how much fat you potentially lose. Which brings us back to the introduction of this video. Is it possible to ruin a week's worth of dieting with one meal? So why don't we look at the amount of calories that would be. 1700 calories is quite a lot of calories, but it's also not a lot of calories. That would bring you in at maybe half a pound of fat loss a week, which people say is terrible, but for the majority of people, that means they would only be in a fat loss phase for like six to 12 months if they were to maintain that. One Domino's pizza, 2,352 calories in a large Domino's pizza. So that one large Domino's pizza 
Game over. All that week's worth of hitting your calories in a deficit, done. So back to the point, is it possible that one meal can ruin a week's worth of dieting? Absolutely. However, a few things to note. A lot of people seem to think it makes sense that we have more calories on those days that we have really big training sessions and that we need to fuel that process or whatever. But that's only if your goal is performance. If your goal is fat loss, it doesn't matter if you get inadequate calorie refeeding after a workout or whatever, which is why I implore people to have some days where they do go relatively low calorie. Because remember, it's not like you're gonna die. No one that's overweight has died of starvation. That's a quote, trademarked. And in essence, if you are going to create the deficit you can through the week. That means you can get away with having more calories at the weekend. But the final thing I'm gonna teach you is this. If you truly think that your weekends are ruining up your diet progress, here's a trick I use with my clients, you can have it for free. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Rather than starting tracking your calories on a Monday, you're gonna start tracking your calories on a Friday. Now, what I want you to do is go through your normal weekend, have absolutely whatever you want. Cool, we're gonna have a bit of ice cream, we're gonna have some chocolate. Hey, let's get that Domino's pizza. I wanna have that Domino's pizza Saturday. I'm going out for breakfast with my friends. Yeah, sweet, wanna go for lunch, that's fine. Let's get an acai bowl. Sounds absolutely great to me. Sunday, oh, a little bit hungover, had a few drinks last night. Should we go out for a Sunday roast? Sunday roast sounds like a good idea. Oh, might get myself a Maxi Bon. I love Maxi Bons, that's my favorite type of ice cream. Let's get some chicken nuggets from McDonald's. Once you've done that weekend of the madness, look at the amount of calories you have left. And then what happens is you go, Holy Jesus, I've barely got anything for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but this is the thing you're gonna do. You're gonna spread up your calories evenly across those days. And people at work are gonna say, oh, but Tricia, that's not enough, you're under eating. Oh, but Dave, you're gonna gain weight if you don't eat enough. Oh, but Etienne, surely you can't lose fat if you're eating too little. That advice falls on deaf ears when they, if they really knew what your weekend was like, they wouldn't be saying that. Now, this is what I can only call poverty calories. And when you try poverty calories, you realize the amount of action you would need to do to balance the books of your current lifestyle. And once you've done this once, the following weekend, you'll go, do you know what? You'll probably go, let's not have that pizza on Friday night, because I'd rather take a big lunch to work on Tuesday. Maybe I won't drink this weekend, because I'd much rather have more to eat on Thursday. And you go, do you know what? Maybe we'll do our own roast at home. So then I can have a little bit of dessert every day of the weekday. Ultimately, you're all big and old enough to wipe your own asses. So you're all big and old enough to budget and manage the finances of the energy world on a week to week basis. The most important thing is I can't tell you what's gonna work best. That's something for you to figure out yourself. And once you manage to balance the books with minimal effort for months and years together, people will start coming up to you and saying, what's your secret? How do you do it, babe? Oh, he must have good genetics. Oh, it's all right for you. Try having kids. When the fact of the matter is, you're not an Egypt with your finances and your spending. Everyone seems to think that it's far too simple to say that managing finances and managing fat loss are inherently similar. But it makes sense because humans are also terrible with finances as much as they are as terrible at managing income and outcome of energy expenditure. Enjoy.